together and give the Lord a praise in the house on this morning. For truly God is not a dead God, but he is still alive. And that is why we're here on this morning. Anybody been blessed by the Lord here on this morning? And you know that God is blessing you and you are not keeping yourself. That it is not in man to direct his own step for whether we need God to lead us and to guide us. I'm so glad I got about four or five people in here that don't need me to say, now give me a G, now give me an O, now give me a D. But you woke up this morning with your mind already stayed on Jesus. And I know some of y'all already looking up, they doing all that. Well, you sit right there like a bump on the log like right? God ain't never did anything for you. But if God woke you up this morning, He's a wonderful Savior. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Look at the neighbor and say, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ah, glory. Thank God. And let me tell you, church, it's just something. I don't know about y'all, but I haven't felt God in the room all morning long. I, I just don't know what it is. But I'm glad that when I come here on Sunday morning, I'm glad to see you, but I ain't necessarily looking for you. I'm looking for God. Because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty to set you free. And every out of everything else, we need the spirit of God. That's what makes the difference. God's spirit. God's presence. And it's good to know that he's here. He's here among us. And I'm, I know that God, the angels in heaven, they are rejoicing at the worship and pray. Let me tell you, church, it's just something about being free to worship God and to give God the praise and the worship that is due to him. And folk may be looking as they may not understand. You don't know somebody just about to have lost their mind this past week alone. You don't know folk got more bills than they got days in the month. Folk got so many things that they are dealing with. And when they come into God's presence, they say, you know what? I'm going to praise God while I got this opportunity. And that is why we're here. And we thank God for this day and for this time. And I thank God for the, those of you that are here today. And I can say, Lord, for the past few months, it seemed like we have at least one or two people that are visiting with us every single Sunday. And we thank God for that. We thank God for your being here. We thank God for those of you that are watching us. And we pray that you will be blessed by those things that are said here on today. And not only is this the Lord's day and we have come to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but we've also gone take time to celebrate the man of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, y'all can do better than that. Come on, somebody. You can praise God for the man of God. All the times you done called him at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. The times your children was acting crazy and you called him to help you out. The times that you was down on your luck and about to lose your mind. And he had to counsel you and give you wisdom. You ought not wait until nobody can hear the praise and can't hear the thanks. But while you have this opportunity right now, go ahead and praise God for the man of God. He did not come here by himself, church. He had to be sent here by God. And if he's ever blessed your life, you ought to thank God for him. Because everybody don't want you calling their phone at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Praise God. Everybody in even time, church, you don't understand. Folk look at the life of a preacher and of a minister. And, you know, they think it's all about all oh, being up there in front of people and speaking and all this kind of stuff you don't know what the man of God has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and while you are in your bed sleeping sleeping peacefully they still up because of the stuff that you just called them and told them about and now they are up wrestling in their spirit with God you don't know so you instead of praying on the man of God let's pray for the man of God Let's support the man of God and let's not put the man of God up so high that we can't reach him. Because we forget sometimes that the man of God, even though he's God's man, before he was God's man, he was still. Let's pray for the man of God and let's support the man of God. Let's hold up his arms in the battle as we continue to do the work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord on this morning? Amen. I believe you came to the right place. As has already been said, we'll be 
in the gospel according to St. Luke on this morning, chapter number five, and we'll be in verses four through 11. I want to talk um, to you all this morning dealing with a, a theme or a subject as we are preparing to go into this new year. Y'all know it's right around the corner, don't you? We are preparing to go into this new year, and I know you already got your list of what I'm going to do and what I ain't going to do and how I'm going to be involved in this and I'm not going to be involved in that. But I want to talk this morning particularly because I believe that a lot of us that have come to faith in Jesus Christ, we signed up for Jesus, but we didn't sign up to follow Jesus. We, we, we signed up for all of the cliches, thanks be unto God who's the head of my life, to the medicine and friend, all of that good stuff. Oh, I'm too blessed to be stressed. Praise God and all of that. But we have not signed up to lose ourselves, let ourselves go, let go of those things that we want and what we desire to truly go after God. So this morning we'll be in Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, beginning at verse number 4, going down to verse number 11. And the Bible will read like this. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Look at your neighbor and say, come out of the shallows and let's go out into the deep. He saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats which belonged to Simon and asked him to put out a little from the land. And then he sat down and was teaching the crowds out of the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon said, we have worked all night long and Deacon Reed ain't caught nothing. <laughs> Nevertheless, at thy word... I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they caught a great number of fish and their nets began to break. So they beckoned to their partners in the other boats to, in other words, y'all come get some of these fish. That they came and they filled their boats so much that the boats began to sink. And when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knee and said, get away from me. Because I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. For he and all those that were with him were amazed at the amount of fish that they had caught. And so were James and John, Zebedee's son, who were Simon's partners. Don't be afraid, Jesus told Simon. From now on, you will be catching men. Verse number 11. Then he brought the boats to land, left everything, and followed Jesus. I want, our message will come from verse number 11, where he said, Then they brought the boats to land, left everything, and followed him. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Lord, be acceptable in thy sight. Pray with me, if you will. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this moment. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Can't nobody do us like the Lord. Father, we know and we are aware of the fact that we can't do anything without your presence. So, Father, we ask that you stay here with us for a little while. Father, somebody came looking for you this morning. My prayer is that they'll find you. Somebody came, Father, and don't even know which direction that they are going. Father, I pray today that they'll find direction. Father, hide me behind your cross. Anoint these lips of clay. Father, that I may be able to say something that will be a benefit to your people, that at the conclusion of the matter may some lost and wandering soul come asking, what do I need to do in order that my soul might be saved? Bless us and we should not be blessed. In Jesus' name, let all of God's children say amen. 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 I want to give for our subject for our message this morning, I am determined to follow Jesus. If you were going to put a subtopic, write discipleship. Determine to follow Jesus. Now, as we just read in Luke chapter 5, these particular verses of scripture that we just got through reading are not about the resurrection, but they are headed to it. And I want you to see the pre-crucifixion resurrection moments, particularly in the life of Simon Peter. They are standing there, Deacon Reed, and they are out there fishing. He was, like me, a professional fisher. Amen, somebody. 
And in verse number four, and in verse number four, it says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, what? Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch of fish. Now, but they had been out there fishing all night and caught nothing, and they were washing their nets. And now Jesus says, launch out into the deep. And when they had this done, well, it actually says in verse number five, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've been out here toiling all night, caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And the Bible says when they had this done, a great number of fish came into the boat. Now, church, understand that this is a huge moment in the Bible. This is Simon Peter for the first time encountering Jesus Christ personally. And he says, Lord, I am so ashamed of who I am, the life that I have lived, I want you to depart from me. You are too holy, and I am a wicked person. Verse 9 says, and he and all that were with him were astonished, and they also were their partners that were with Simon. Listen, and Jesus said to Simon Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you are going to catch men. So they brought their boats to land, and when they brought them to them, forsook all, and again he said what? Church, it says in Matthew chapter 4 that Jesus said to them, he who gives a little bit more insight, he says, he said to him the same setting, but from another writer's point of view, he said, follow me. He said those words to Peter, follow me. I want you to look with me. I want you to go quickly to the book of Matthew chapter 26. And he's following Jesus. We're, we're going to fast forward here three years and pick up the story now in verse number 31. And this is what it said. Then Jesus said to all of them, we're speaking to all of the disciples of them. And he said to them, you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the flock will scatter. Church, it's in the Bible that it's going to happen. He was referring to a prophecy. This is going to happen. All of you are going to forsake me because the Bible prophesied that you would in the Old Testament. Verse number 33. And Peter answered to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, man, you're fooling yourself, but you ain't fooling me. Assuredly, I say to you that before the rooster crows, you will deny me how many times? Peter said, even if I have to die with you, listen to this. I'm going to tell you why I will not mess up. And he gets very specific. I will not deny you. And so said all of the disciples. But then, it's really sad. I want you to see it. He says, I'm never going to deny you. I'm not going to do it. There are some things I will not do. I promise I'm not going to do it. I will not do it. And then he says, I'll tell you specifically what I'm not going to do. I will never deny you. The area that I will not do it in, this is the area. Church, I will not specifically deny you, and we're not here to look down and beat up on Simon Peter, because I want you to understand that you relate to him more than you realize. How many of y'all, and be, be, tell the truth, shame the devil, have ever told the Lord in some weak area of your life, i never do it again? Wait, 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 wait. He said, now, now I'm not even finished with the question yet. How many of you have said in a weak area of your life, I'll never do it again, and you did it again? So how many of you would agree with this point that you can relate to Simon Peter because there are things, number one, I said I never do, and I did them. And then there's things that I said I never do again, and I've done them again. And what's amazing is when you start reading the story in Matthew chapter 26 around verse 69, the Bible says that they arrest Jesus same night, take him to the courtyard, verse number 69. Now Peter sat outside the courtyard and a servant girl came to him saying, 
You are those of Jesus of Galilee. Verse 70, here it goes now, y'all. But he denied it before them all saying, I don't know what you're talking about. So here comes a girl, same night that he said, I won't do it. This is all same day, y'all. Here comes a girl saying, yeah, you one of them. And he instantly, in the very place that he said he would not do it, he did it. Aren't you one of them? I deny that. I am not one of them. It gets worse. Watch this, verse 71. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another girl saw him. And said, hey, you're one of those. You're one of those fellows that was hanging out with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 72, but he again denied. But watch, he goes deeper, church, with an oath. Peter started cussing. Before, he just denied. Have you ever noticed that he denied with an oath, church? When, when an oath is a reference to a legal term, it, it would be equivalent or a lot like when you go to court and say, you know, put your hands on the Bible. Do you swear, you heard it, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but? So when you, I mean Peter, was denying it, he was saying, I'm willing to not just deny Jesus, I will swear an oath to it that I don't know him. That's two. Well, verse 73, a little later, those who stood by and came up and said to Peter, he's having a bad night, said to Peter, surely you're one of them because the way you talk is telling on you. Verse 74, then he began to cuss and swear, saying, I don't know the fill-in-the-blank man. I mean, he's gone from denying to denying with the oath now he didn't go on to cussing. I don't know the blankety blank man. I don't know this. And he's denying and he's cursing three times. And then notice what happens in verse number 74. Immediately. Church, this is such a sad scripture. It says that immediately the rooster began to crow. Notice verse 75. Can I teach you this morning? And Peter remembered the words to Jesus who said to him, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. So he went out, and the Bible says he wept bitterly. I want you to see something maybe you've never seen in the story. And it's in Luke chapter 22 and verse number 60. It's the same occasion, but from a different writer. And he's saying, here's what I noticed. And Peter said to the man the last time, I don't know him. The rooster crowed, this time he says, while he was speaking. Listen to the verse in verse 61. And the Lord turned right after the rooster crowed, verse 61. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Earlier this morning, we just got through talking about this, Peter. I thought you weren't going to deny me. I thought you said that you'd never forsake me. But now, the rooster has crowed. And when he looked at Peter with his black eyes, with his busted nose and his bruised lips, had streams of blood pouring down the crown of thorns that had been jammed down on his head. And they beat Jesus. And when the Bible said Jesus turned when the rooster crowed and looked Peter right in the eyes. Can you imagine how Peter felt, church? The very man that just said, I'll never deny you. I didn't just deny you. I denied you with the oath. Then I started cussing and saying I didn't know you. And now the rooster has crowed. And right after the rooster crowed, church, Jesus with a black eye, with a bloody nose and with bruised lips and with streams of blood, looks right into the eyes of Simon Peter. And he remembered the words the rest of the verse said of how he said to him, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me. Verse 62 is really sad. And he went and he wept bitterly. Church, I think we need to remember this because so many of us start out eagerly when we first come to faith in Jesus Christ. 
And yes, Lord, I'll follow you. Maybe it was when you was a child and you didn't really understand what you were doing. You said, I'll follow you. And you said you love the Lord and you were going to follow the Lord. But there's an interesting verse in Matthew chapter 26. It said he followed him in verse number 58. It says that Peter followed him from a distance. That's big, church. He starts out following him. And Luke 5, you remember he started this story, follow me. And he followed him. And then something happened through the years where he's now not following him, but he's following him from a distance. They used to be tight, church. He used to be right under him and right by his side. He forsook everything. He was the main thing in his life. And he loved him with all of his heart. But now... The years have worn away. The relationship between Simon Peter and Christ. And now the Bible says he's following him and he still loves him. But he's following him from afar off. He said, there's a lot of people that will come to here and they love me and they decided to follow me. Maybe when they were a child, maybe they gave their heart to the Lord when they were 20 or 30 or whatever it was. But the years have brought a lot of distance. And you are following me at a distance and the things they said they would never do, they do them again and again and again. But they still say they love Jesus. They still in their hearts want to follow me and I want to tell them I love them. I want to tell them that I've made a way for them. I want to tell them that I'm not angry or mad at them and know that we are close, but they're following me at a distance. Your Bible said that Peter decided in John chapter 21, I think it's in the third verse. He said, I'm going back to fishing. You can read saying, catch them this time, I'm going back to fishing. When he said, I'm going fishing, he said, I'm going back to who I used to be before I met Jesus Christ. I've blown it. I messed up. I failed. I'm going back to who I used to be because he wouldn't do what God was calling him to do. I looked in his eyes and I denied him who could ever get a moment after they have done something like that. And I know, church, that there are many people that come to Christ, and maybe there are some of you in this room today that even though you love God with all of your heart, in the back of your mind, you are still holding yourself to the fire because of choices that you have made, because of decisions that you have made, because of things that you have done. But I've come to let you know this morning that God has not come to hold anything against you, but rather God has come to set you free. The Bible says that he whom the son sets free is free indeed. He want to set you free this morning. In John chapter 21, amen, TJ. He said, listen, it's the same miracle. Jesus is about to set up church the same miracle twice. It's the same miracle. Have you ever noticed this? The same miracle. It happens twice. They fish all night. They're coming in, and I love it because the scripture said that Jesus appeared in his resurrected body. Yeah. After the crucifixion, on the beach, walking in the sand, y'all. And they were about 100 yards out. It was still dark. There was some fog out there, and they see a figure out there walking on the beach. They can't really make out who it is, and the voice comes over the water, did y'all catch anything to eat? <laughs> Have you had anything to eat? Listen to these words. When the morning had come, verse number four, he stood on the shore and Jesus said to him, children, have you any food? They didn't know who they were talking to. They shouted back, no, we ain't got nothing to eat. We fish all night. Does that sound similar? We fish all night. We didn't catch anything. And the voice says back, cast out your net on the other side. Oh, this is deja vu. This is something that had happened all over again. One of them turns his eyes and said, wait a minute. We heard that before. 
And I kind of recognized the voice. We've been here before. Yeah, we've been here before, y'all. And they threw the net out on the other side. And the Bible said that they caught so many fish. And the boat began to sink because the fish was so big. And suddenly John, the apostle whom Jesus loved, turned to Peter and he said, do you know who that is? You remember the first time this happened. And he looks around and he looks at Peter. And the Bible said, Peter just jumped out into the water. And he began to swim back to Jesus. And he comes up out of the water and Jesus has fish and fire and bread and cooking a meal of restoration. Saying, come on, Peter, I've been waiting on you. Come on, come on, I've been waiting on you. You don't have to bring anything. You ain't got to stop by the store and get no light bread. You ain't got to stop and get no hot sauce. I don't need nobody to pick up no grease. I got everything that I need. And aren't y'all glad that when you decided to come back to Jesus, that he said, you know what? Leave all of that other stuff behind and just come on. Come on with your sinful self. Come on with your broken self. Come on with your beaten down self. And I will restore you. Church, the reason that Jesus kept asking him is not to convince Jesus that Peter loved him. He was saying, I want you to listen to what you are telling me. I know you love me, but you think you've messed up because you messed up that you don't love me. I know even though you've been messing up and doing it over and over again, I know in your heart that you really want to follow me. And you love me, you just don't have any consistency. And you're following me from a distance. You're following me from a distance. I think that describes church. So many people who come to church on Easter and Mother's Day. Christmas coming up, it's going to be some people we ain't seen in forever. They're going to be here on Christmas. But church, that is a sad thing to where you have to pick out in your mind what you consider to be special days on whether or not you're going to come out and you're going to give God praise or whether you're going to worship him. There are some of y'all in here, you know even right now that you are not as close to God as you used to be. You need to get back close to God. There are some of y'all that don't have the relationship relationship with God that you used to have you need to get that relationship back with God God ain't moved nowhere God has not changed you didn't got out of the way you've gotten off the path and we need to turn today while we still got time there are a lot of people that say oh, I love the Lord he heard my cry pitied every groan Long as I live and trouble rise, I hasten to his throne. I'm blessed and highly favored. But you don't want to serve God. Oh, I love him. He's making a way for me. But you won't submit yourself to him. Jesus is saying that a person that is truly a follower of me is not a person that's just a follower in their speech and in their vocabulary, but whether a person that will follow me with their actions. Come on, somebody. Somebody that's going to follow me in their day-to-day -day life. Jesus is not looking for people that are just going to sign up for Sunday morning and Wednesday night. Jesus needs people that are going to take up their cross every single day of their life. They are going to deny themselves so that they are able to follow Jesus. And I want to ask you this morning, what is it in your life that's just too big that you just can't seem to let it go? What is it that got such a strong hold on you that you feel like you can't let it go? Jesus has come to set you free. saying I know many years ago the first time that you followed me and you said that you were going to follow me I know that you meant it and I know that you were sincere but then life happened life ever happened to any of y'all 
any of you all ever purpose in your mind that you were going to do something and then it seemed like the very moment that you said that you were going to do something that everything else except what you wanted to do seemed like it wanted to appear that opportunities that you had been looking for it seemed like they popped up right at that moment that things that you wanted to do they popped up right at that moment just like God knows that you have a desire for him the devil knows that you have a desire for God as well he knows that you have a zeal for God he knows that you want to serve God and when you make up in your mind that I'm going to live for God, come hell or high water, if mama don't go, I'm going to go. If I got to go by myself, if my daddy don't go, I'm going to go. If I got to go by myself, is there anybody in here this morning that's made up your mind that you are going to follow Jesus? Let the wind blow, I'm going to follow Jesus. Let the rain fall, I'm going to follow Jesus. Let the tide stand up as high as it wants to, I'm going to follow Jesus. And when the end enemy comes in like a flood that the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I'm going to follow Jesus while I still got time, while I still got the right mind, while I still got the activity of my limb. And even if I got to walk while I'm hurting, while I got to walk while I'm bruised, I'm still going to follow Jesus. Jesus said, you know what? Preacher, I know you gave your heart to me a long time ago. You obeyed my word a long time ago. And preacher, you said that you would never deny me. And I may have never denied God with my words, but I sure have with my works. Be real with yourself this morning, church. You may not have denied him with your mouth, but you sure enough denied him with some of the stuff that you've done. Some of the decisions that you made, you sure enough denied him. And we got to get to a point to where we are willing to hold ourselves accountable. The church cannot become better until you yourself become better. The church cannot change its direction until you yourself change its direction. It's no use in 99 going this way and another one going that way. We are still not going to end up to where we want to be. We got to work together church if we expect to get to where we want to be. Then Jesus. He met the resurrected Jesus. Walking out there on the beach. The very one church that he said I'll never deny you. Peter do you love me? Lord you know that I love you. If you love me feed my sheep. Okay I'll feed them. Uh, do you love me? Lord, you know that I love you. You just asked me this already. I, I got to say it again. You know that I love you. Well, if you love me, feed my sheep. He has now met the resurrected Jesus. The resurrection church makes a difference. You know that, right? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ says, I, through my grace, will empower you, and you'll still struggle from time to time, amen, somebody, and you'll still have sin in your life, and you'll still deny me some and do things that you shouldn't do, but you won't be happy and content to be distant from me. And can I tell you, church, when you leave God and when you get at a distance from Jesus Christ, I don't care what you have, I don't care what you are enjoying, it'll never bring you the peace that you are seeking. It'll never, let me tell you, church, you may have a million dollars in the bank account, but none of those dollars are able to buy you joy that only God can give. None of that money is able to buy you a peace of mind. None of it can do it for you. That's why I'm so glad that the Bible said that I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Let me tell you, even when you're going through church, you got to keep your eyes on the prize. Even when you feel like you have been beaten down, you got to continue to look up. David will let you know when you're going through, don't look to the north, don't look to the south, don't look to the east, don't look to the west, but we have to lift up your eyes unto the hill from whence it comes your help, all of your help, it comes from God Almighty. Church, can I tell you, the closer you get to him, you can see your shadow. That's why the Bible said that he that dwells under the shadow of the Most High God will abide under the shadow of the Almighty in the secret place. He doesn't want you at a distance because when you are at a distance, 
the crowing of the rooster might confuse you. And some of y'all been trying to praise God this morning, and you heard a little cock a doo doo doo. What have you been doing? Why haven't you been worshiping God like you're supposed to be worshiping God? Cock a doo doo doo. You haven't been living for God much, but you say you love him. And you said that you were going to follow him, and you are following him at a distance. Well, you wouldn't have come to church this morning. And we're not here to beat up on anybody. We are simply here to say we can relate to you. What I'm saying to you is, church, you don't have to live with the crowing of the rooster when there is a resurrected Lord who is saying you can start over today. You don't have to be bound by all of this stuff that happened. I told y'all a long time ago, used to be don't make honey no more. Some of y'all will catch that when you get in your car and you're turning on Wilson Boulevard and you're about to get on the interstate. Some of y'all will catch it. But I'm so glad, church, I don't know about any of y'all, but I'm so glad that God is not holding yesterday against me. That does not mean that people are going to forget where I was. That does not mean that people are going to forget where I was and what I did, but that means that God has forgiven me. God has wiped my slate king and the things that God, you might remember it, but God has forgotten it. God has thrown it into the sea of forgiveness. And I'm so glad that he said in his word that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, that old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I praise God for the people in my life that remind me of who I used to be, where I used to be, what I used to be involved in, because you are letting me know that you can see the work that God is doing in my life. Some of y'all can say, preacher, places that I used to go, I don't go no more. Things that I used to do, I don't do it anymore. Why? Because I'm following Jesus. Because I'm walking with him. And step by step, I'm going to get to where God wants me to go. He has set you free, church. He has set you free. But I want us, as we're getting ready to embark in a new year, and oh, we're so excited about it. It's a new year. Hopefully things are going to be different. If nothing else is different, let your walk with God be different. Let us stop following him at a distance. Let him not just be good enough for us to worship on Sunday, but let him be good enough for us to testify about throughout the week. Come on, somebody. Let him be good enough to come into our house. Come on, say, everybody else come to your house. Let God come into your house. You ought to welcome God into your prayer. That's why things are the way they are, because God is not welcome in your life. God is not welcome into your home. But he told them, he said, when I see the blood, he said, I'll pass over your house. You ought to want God in your house, church. You ought to want the presence of God in your house. You got to welcome him. He has come, church. And he says, you know what? You know what, Reed? You ain't caught that anyway. Put that fishing pole down. He says, Reed, I know you had already got your knife out ready to clean. Put it away. Ain't no fish coming. <laughs> Leave what you are doing. I know this is your profession. I know this is what you are used to doing. Can't nobody tell you how to do it better. And could you just imagine if some of us were Peter? This is how we would have been. Well, Jesus, you a carpenter. You don't know nothing about fishing. I've been out here fishing all my life. How you going to tell me about fishing? Well, if, if we was going to build a house or we was going to lay some carpet, I might want to talk to you, but you don't know anything about this. Can I tell you some church? The most uneducated person in the world can teach somebody with a PhD something they don't know. 
But you got to be willing to humble yourself to the point. That's why some of us, if we're not careful, we'll get this high and mighty kind of mindset and think that we are above. That's why the Bible says, let any man that thinks he stand take heed unless he fall. Because you are the very one that says, I never do this. I never do that. I never go over here. And I never go over there. But when desire and opportunity meet each other. will be struggling church but he tells them leave what you know leave what you are accustomed to and what you've been doing all of your life and follow me in essence he was telling them you know what I know you've been doing this but eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it even entered into your heart what it is that I'm about to do in your life he's telling them you know what I know you at the tail right now but my desire for you is for you to be the head come on somebody and not the tail God is calling for us to be above only and not beneath but that will only happen if you follow in Jesus he said, you know what? Let it go and come with me. He says, I'll show you something different. And I believe, if I'm not crazy, I got two or three people in here who say, Preacher, since I followed Jesus, my life has never been the same. Preacher, since I decided, I ain't talking about preaching when I was playing church. Uh-huh, some of us still playing. Amen, somebody. I ain't talking about when I was playing church, but I'm talking about with preacher, when I truly made a decision in my mind that I was going to follow Jesus. I don't care what nobody else got to say. I'm sold out for Jesus Christ. I'm going to live for God. Folk may say that Jesus is not alive, but they must not be saved serving my Jesus because my Jesus is alive. He is well. He is still in the soul saving business so I'm going to serve him while I yet got time. Let it go he says. I know this is what you used to and here's the thing church the only way you're going to get to where God wants you to be is when you're willing to leave your comfort zone. When you're willing to leave what you used to, what you well I know this and I know that. You don't know anything. The Bible says that all of our righteousness in the eyesight of God ain't nothing but filthy rags. All of us talking about what we going to go, what we going to do. You don't know where you're going to go and what you're going to do. The Bible says there's not any man to direct his own self. You don't know where you're going or how you're going to get there. You're dependent on God. You're dependent on God. Y'all didn't even know you had your clothes laid out last night. Talking about you was coming to worship this morning. You didn't know whether or not you was coming to worship this morning. Had it not been for God coming by your house and waking you up this morning, you would not be here right now. Had it not been for God making your legs have strength enough to support your body, you wouldn't be here. So since he blessed you, you ought to give the Lord the praise that is due to him. Follow me, and I'll make you fishes of men. Stop trying. I know you thought they was buying no mud minnows, but they buying shrimp. Follow me. I know you thought they was that, but if you let that go, Jesus says, you know what? I want to do something so big in your life. Peter, you trying to stick yourself to being a fisherman. When I want to empower you to be the man that's going to preach the first gospel sermon. You want to be stuck out here. When I got to send you over to the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles are not yet even aware that they are to be included in the body of Christ. Peter, let all of this little stuff that you are doing go so that I can do some big stuff in your life. And God is saying the same thing to some of us this morning. Because can I tell y'all, a lot of us are majoring in minor stuff. A lot of us are putting weight in stuff that really don't matter. And Jesus said, you know what? If you will stop wasting time trying to fulfill your plans, if you will stop wasting time trying to get even with folk, if you will stop wasting time trying to get back at folk, Jesus said, I'll pick your feet up out of the miry clay. I'll set your feet up on a rock to stand. I'll establish your going if you will simply follow me. 
make up in your mind that you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Willing to deny yourself to follow Jesus. Can I tell y'all, you ain't going to be able to follow Jesus without letting some stuff go. You're not going to be able to follow Jesus. And can I tell you, some of y'all got to let some folk go. Well, that's my friend. That's my heart. And you don't even know the reason why you can't be blessed is because of the people that you're hanging around. Some of y'all don't even know the Bible says evil companionship corrupts good morals. In, in the church, you got to be aware of who you hang around. You got to be aware of how you conduct yourself when you are out there around folk. Because can I tell you, the very folk that are encouraging who you are outside of Jesus Christ are the very ones that don't want you to serve God. They are the ones that said, oh, you ought to come with me today. Ain't no use in going down there and serving God. Ain't no use in doing that. You ought to surround yourself with people, church, that support you in the work of God. You ought to surround yourself, church, with people that have a relationship with God. So that when times come in your life where you don't have the strength, you can say, hey, air the distance, I'm going through a hard time right now, and I need you to go to God on my behalf. And you can trust that that person is able to get a prayer through to God. Now, some folk, I wouldn't ask them to pray for me. You can't ask everybody to pray for you. Y'all better be careful calling these 1 800 numbers talking about you need prayer. For a fee of $9.99. We'll be glad. You better be careful, church. Everybody might be praying, but they might not be praying to our God. Everybody ain't looking out for you. Come on, somebody. Everybody is not looking out for your benefit. That's why you got to surround yourself with people that you know have a relationship with God. And they can get a prayer through church. Follow me. He said, follow me. Let go. I know what you're used to doing, but follow me. I know what you've been doing all of this time, but forget about it. What the man said, forget about it. You know, follow me. And I will make you a fish of me. Jesus is giving that same plea to us this morning. Let it go. That's what he's saying. Let it go. I know this is what you've been doing all this time, but he says, let it go. Some of y'all that are following God at a distance, come on, pick up your pace. Come on. Catch up with him. Pray to God, Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. You know what? Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy bleeding Draw me nearer. Bring me closer today than I was yesterday. And Lord, if there be anything in the way, move it. Be careful when you ask God to do that because the very stuff that he going to move is the stuff that you don't want to let go. He'll cause folk that you thought would never betray you to spit in your face and make you recognize who they were all of this time. God a call. Let me tell you, God a call, and you won't even know why things are happening the way that they are happening. But the whole while, God is pushing you to something greater. God is trying to get you out of where you are so that He can take you to where it is that He want to be. Lord, if there be anything in the way, move it so that I can be who you desire for me to be. I want to be like. That person that David described, that he that abides under the shadow of the Almighty. That's why I want to be under the wings of God's protection. So that when the storms come, and they will come, I got cover. You ever seen a mother hen with her little chickens? And they get the rain or something like that, what's she going to do? She's going to go. She's 
she spread those wings out. That's good to know that as children of God, that when we're going through the fires of life, that we have a God that'll come and he'll just, he'll just cover us. He'll, he'll overshadow us. He'll say, you know what? I know you feeling down, and I know you by yourself, and I know you feel like you ain't got nobody on your side, so I'm just going to come, and I'm just going to cover you. I know you have reached a point to where you have ran out of words, and the tears are doing all the talking, but he said, you know what? I'm going to come, and I'm just going to cover you, and I'm glad that he does not just cover me during my downtime, but I'm glad that he has covered my sin. I'm glad that he has washed my sins away. I'm glad that he said in his word that God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repent and I'm glad when I was on my way to a devil's hell as the old folks say I wasn't fit to live and I was too scared to die I'm glad that God stopped by my house and he said you know what I see you're going down the wrong path so I'm going to give you another chance is there anybody in the house this morning that's glad that God has giving you another chair that God has written down your name in the Lamb's book of life that things that you used to do you don't do anymore yet you got something on the inside and it's working on the outside and it's bringing about a change in your life you are not who you used to be ain't the Lord all right church He's all right. And he wants you this morning. He wants you this morning to make up in your mind that you're going to follow him. Stop being part-time. God don't need no seasonal employees. God wants people that are not just going to come to work. He wants folk that's going to put in some overtime. That's the kind of people. That's the kind of people that you look for, Elder Denson. You ain't looking for nobody every day. They clocking in thirty minutes late, hour late, two hours late. I'm talking about myself. But you know what? Folk clocking, you know, folk clocking in late, you know, showing up late, and that the phone is only for company pur purposes. They over there talking to Taquanisha, Boniqua, Dequa. They talking to everybody on the phone about what they gonna do and how they gonna do this. God does not need people in the house. God does not need people in His ministry that are only here for what they can get and what they can benefit out of but God is looking for somebody what did the man say ask not what your country can do for you but rather ask what you can do for your country you ought to not always ask what can God do for you but you ought to ask Lord what can I do for you how can I be used to your glory how can I be used to benefit your kingdom you can start out by following him, walking with him. You know, you know uh, Paul said something. He told him, he said, you know what? Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm glad he didn't stop with follow me. Because I ain't going to tell nobody in here, follow me. But rather follow me as I follow Christ. If you see anywhere where I'm not following Christ, let me know. Amen, somebody. Because if I see anywhere where you are not following Christ, I'm going to come and that's what the Bible says, that the strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak. We got to hold each other accountable. You signed up to follow Jesus, you need to be here so you can serve him. We use God like that little wheel under the trunk. You know, the little, what they call it, to get you there. The little, you know. <laughs> the spell the donut yeah that would have there you know I take him out when I really need him oh if you had good sense you recognize you need him every second every minute every hour well, then somebody said preach I can't even walk unless God is holding my hand Preacher, I can't make it a day. I can't make it an hour. can't make it a moment except God is with me. Church, I'm trying to follow Jesus. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I follow him as I should. Because there are days in my life where I don't follow him like I should. 
And if I know that's true of me, I know it's true of everybody in here. I know you've been in the church 50 years, but you've been struggling 50 years too. I know you've been doing it, but you've been struggling. All of us in our walking with God, because you got eyes just like I got eyes. And as you're walking with God, oftentimes you're going to see little detours off of the road. Oftentimes as you're walking with God, you'll see a, a, a car roll by. You ever been driving and you see somebody roll up in a Benz or something like that? Oh, man, that thing showing up bad. Look at that. Look at that. And you slowing down. You're holding up traffic trying to look at you know, and what, what really grinds my gears is when you're driving on the interstate and it just be a, a, maybe a police sitting up there or you got a little accident that happened and y'all got traffic backed up for an hour because everybody want to drive by slow and see what's going on. Everybody, you know, they, I'm in a hurry, but I ain't in such a hurry that I can't stop by and see what's going on. And you got to be aware, church. You got to be prepared that as you're walking with God, as you're going on this journey with God, that you are supposed to be keeping your eyes on the prize. You ought to keep your eyes set on God and as you go on that journey there are going to be many things that are going to pop up in efforts to get your attention but keep your eyes on Jesus don't be like Peter Lord bid me to come out to you he's walking out on the water oh man this is really happening I ain't even sinking I don't even feel the water under my feet. This is really happening. Oh my God. The minute he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sing. Now, oh, Lord, help me. I'm drowning. Well, if you would have kept your eyes on me, you would have never drowned. No man, church, that has put his hands to the gospel plow and look back. It's fit for the kingdom. God don't want none of um, Lot's wives up in here. God wants people that are going to keep their eyes set ahead. He wants us to stay focused, church, so that we can go forward. Follow Jesus, and you'll get to where you want to be. He's calling for us, church, to come out of our way of living, to come out of our desires and our choices. He's calling for us, come out of the boat, let down your net, and come follow me. Are you willing to follow Jesus this morning? Are you truly willing to follow him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength? If you will, he'll welcome you. He wants you to follow him. He says, you know what? And I'll take you to where it is that you're trying to go. What, what, the, what did the old song say? Let Jesus lead you. Not just some of the way, but all the way. Then it says, all the way from earth to heaven. Let Jesus lead you all the way. He want to lead you this morning. If you will simply give him the opportunity. My brother, my sister, my friend, somebody in our midst on this morning, hadn't even began to follow Jesus. You don't know what it is to follow God at a distance because you never followed him in the first place. He's calling for you this morning. He's made a way, a means available to you so that you are able to come with him and follow me. Come to him this moment. You've heard the word of God. Now my question is, do you believe what it is that you have heard? Are you willing now to repent of your sins and confess Christ as your Savior. Be buried with him in baptism. The Lord says in his word that he will add you to the church. Maybe there's somebody here and you say, Preacher, I'm walking at a distance. Preacher, it's me. I have not been serving God like I should. The fire that I used to have is not the fire that I have right now. It dwindled down a little bit. I need, I need some more fire. Let us pray for you this morning. For the prayers truly of the righteous church, they availeth much. And can I tell you, you're not going to make it without prayer. You're not going to make it. I know you're strong as Superman and Wonder Woman, but let me tell you, you need prayer. 
if you're going to be able to make it. If you're subject to the invitation today, don't question in your mind. I know some of us in here, even right now, in your mind, you're wondering, should I do it? Should I not? Should I make the decision? Or should I wait just a little while longer? Who told you you had a little while longer? I ain't trying to scare you by any mean, mean stretch of the imagination. I'm just trying to make you aware that your life is not your own. And God could decide at any given moment to call you home. Would you be ready to meet him? Have you been following him like you should? Have you been serving him like you should? Make the decision in your heart today to follow Jesus. You can follow him now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. There is power, power wonder-working power, power in the blood.